Greetings, everyone, and welcome to the Trial Site News Africa Trailblazer Town Hall Series. I'm your host, Shabnam Pelesa Mohammed for Trial Site News Africa. The Trailblazer Town Hall Series brings together experts from around the world to engage and debate the most important health issues of our time, to answer questions you, the public, have, and to create a paradigm for a new pathway for health. Today, we're in conversation with uh, some brilliant experts, especially selected for the Science for Humanity panel. I want to tell you a bit about Trial Site News, of course, which is the leading platform for uncensored and credible science and health information. Our mission is to drive awareness, introduce transparency, and facilitate engagement amongst people around the world, from pharmaceutical professionals and academic researchers to regulators, healthcare professionals, and of course, the all consuming public. We value transparency, objectivity, and the scientific method in pursuit of the truth wherever it may lead us. Before I introduce our stimulating topic and guests, it's of course let you tune into and share a robust conversation. You can watch and share this broadcast from Trial Site News Facebook page. If of course you've registered using the Zoom link invite, welcome. You'll be able to ask questions during the course of the conversation and we in fact encourage you to do so. Uh, today, Trial Site News is in proud association with the World Council for Health for the Science for Humanity topic. The World Council for Health is a worldwide coalition of health-focused organizations and civil society groups that seek to broaden public health knowledge and sense-making through science and shared wisdom. The World Council for Health is publicly funded, which enables it to continue to make the best health decisions for the people free from conflicts of interest and pharmaceutical industry ties. To find out more about the World Council for Health, you can go to worldcouncilforhealth.org. My co-host for today is Professor Nati Madladla from South Africa. We'll be sharing some of the questions our registered guests are asking in the Q&A section of the webinar. So you'll be able to chat as you want to in the chat section, but of course, remembering to keep it, of course, respectful uh, and on point, but in the Q&As where you'll ask questions that you would like our guests to respond to. Remember, keep them short and sharp and upvote those questions that you believe are the best ones that should be answered. Professor Matladla, for context, please give us your 30-second introduction. Thanks, Abnam, and uh, good evening uh, to people that are within our time zone uh, and in South Africa especially. And to all our guests from all over the world, I've seen in the chat, there are a lot of people from all over the world. Um, I'm Prof. Ladra, I'm a former uh, head of ICU at uh, Dr. George Mukara Academic Hospital. Um, recently resigned and has probably similar pressures uh, as Paul Merrick. Um, I'm currently in private practice as a um, mechanical um, anesthetist, but starting to do a bit of ICU work as well there. So hopefully we'll be extending our protocols to the private sector um, as well. And I'm looking forward uh, to being part of this webinar. And uh, please keep your questions coming. Uh, we'll definitely get our panelists uh, to answer them. Thanks. Excellent. Thank you very much, Prof. Madlada. Looking forward to working with you today. Our topic, of course, for today's inspiring, informative, and interactive launch of the Trailblazer Town Hall is Science for Humanity. And this topic came up during my engagement with my friends and colleagues here on the panel today, understanding their experiences, but also myself keeping an eye on what's happening in our world and understanding that science needs to be brought back to humanity. Uh, for context and for a quote that I thought was really quite powerful, science is a beautiful gift to humanity. We should not distort it. And that's the former president of India, Abdul Kalam. Uh, the format of this trailblazer town hall is going to be uh, interview style with three rounds of questions followed by audience Q&A and, of course, an empowering closing message from our six panelists. As a disclaimer, the conversation is going to be completely uncensored. The views and opinions of our guests are not necessarily the views of Trial Site News or, of course, the World Council for Health. Two more quotes to contextualize and to warm us up for this conversation. Science is a perversion of itself unless it has as its ultimate aim the betterment of humanity. And that was scientist Nikola Tesla. And to balance things off, we have to talk about liberating minds as well as liberating society. And that one, Professor Angela Davis. So to unpack this topic, science for humanity and develop a new paradigm for science and health, let's warmly welcome Dr. Tess Laurie, 
Professor Paul Marek, Dr. Pia Corey, Dr. Piki Krakani, Dr. Peter McCullough, and Dr. Geert van den Bosch. For anyone who does not know you yet, tell us why you chose medicine, what it is you do, and what you're passionate about. Dr. Tess Lorry. You're mute, Tess. Yes. Um, well, uh, I, I chose medicine. I wasn't expecting this question, Shabna. Gosh, um, I chose medicine because I wanted to help people. I've just always wanted to help. I, I always wanted to make a difference. Um, and uh, it's not been easy making a difference, actually, um, I, I, you know, in, in my 50 years or so. Um, I found um, a lot of things kind of out of control. Um, you know, when, uh, and, and, um, but, um, it, you know, it continues to be um, my purpose and uh, the thing that keeps me happy. Um, so um, what was the next part of that? Um, I'm a medical is, doctor and a researcher. Um, yes. I'm the, um, the CEO of a community interest company, which is a nonprofit company called EBMC Squared, which is named after Einstein's equation. Um, and um, I'm also a co-founder of the World Council for Health. Perfect. Thank you. Professor Paul Merrick, for anyone who doesn't know you yet, tell us why you chose medicine, what <clears> you do, and what you're passionate about. Yeah, Shabnam, thanks for the question. Much like Tess, I mean, it's an interesting question. I suppose I was destined to do medicine. I love science. I love physiology, and that seemed the natural thing. And it's it's always a privilege to be able to help people. I think that's the biggest reward in medicine is being able to help people and make their lives a little better. But as you know, I'm going through some issues right now. And I was actually meant to work this morning in the ICU. I arrived at work to find a letter stating that I'm not allowed to work. My hospital privileges were revoked. So... Mm. You know, the evilness just is spreading. Thank you for sharing with, uh, with us, Professor Merrick. You're amongst colleagues, friends, and supporters from around the world. So we'll certainly be unpacking what's going on with that court case and more importantly, how we can show you solidarity. Thank you, Professor Merrick. And I must sure. at this point mention that both Dr. Tess Laurie and Professor Paul Merrick have their roots right here in Africa. And we're very, very proud of them. El Presidente, Pierre Corey, for anyone who doesn't know you yet, I find it surprising. Tell us why you chose medicine, what you do, and what you're passionate about. Yeah. I mean, for me, so I'm like, Paul, I like science and math. I actually studied mathematics. That was kind of my main strength. Um, but I didn't really want to teach math, and I wasn't smart enough, actually, to do high-level math. And and it's about problem solving. And I loved problem solving. And I just, and I, too, like, I wanted to help people. I didn't want to sell them anything. I didn't want to build them anything like business was just not me. Um, I, I, here's the thing. I knew I wanted to do two things. I wanted to be a teacher or a doctor. And I got to tell you, I've loved my career because I became both. I mean, you know, I, I teach medicine and and I practice medicine and it's really satisfying. Um, it's horrifically trying right now. We're going to talk about it today. Um, mm -hmm. I think medicine's almost collapsing. Um because it's violating its core, like you said, the scientific principles, which is that it, it should be science to benefit humanity and to help patients. And we're not seeing the science being led in that direction right now. And hopefully we can correct course. I have absolutely faith that we'll be able to do that. And that's what this conversation is about today. And that's why you've been especially selected to join us and to speak to the world. Dr. Pinky Krakani from South Africa. For anyone who doesn't know you yet, why you chose medicine, what it is you do, and what you're passionate about. I think medicine was my first love from the very beginning. I started loving medicine at the age of three. As a sickly child, I would end up in the doctor's room, and I got inspired from that early age. And I loved medicine. I loved meds. I loved biology. Therefore, that became the most natural route to take for me. I'm still in love with medicine, but I don't love medicine today. Sad to say, I'm just, I'm just getting overwhelmed by the day because it's not exactly what I would have wanted it to be. Some honesty there coming through from our doctors and certainly room and perspective for us to think about and change direction. Thank you, Dr. Pinky. Moving then to Dr. Peter McCullough. 
I'd be surprised if anyone didn't know you yet. Very popular in South Africa as well amongst all of our panelists here today. What it is you do, why you chose medicine, and what you're passionate about. Well, thanks for the introduction, Chef Ma'am. I'm Dr. Peter McCullough. I'm a practicing internist, cardiologist. I've trained in epidemiology. I'm based in Dallas, Texas at a large medical center. I'm currently broadcasting to you from Tampa, Florida today as we have a multi-speaker symposium. We just held about a 200-person physician and healthcare provider symposium in one room, and now we're moving over to the general session, which is below me, uh, where we have about 2,000 people. I can tell you we are undergoing a scientific reawakening, and like many of the doctors on the panel, I went into medicine because I love science and I wanted to help people. I had no other career choice outside of medicine. I'm completely committed to it. Uh, I'm committed to doing the best I possibly can on each individual patient, but also for groups of patients and for populations. And so what that means right now in our time of crisis is for us to do exactly what we're doing, is taking science to the people. There are media people who like you, Shabnam, and Daniel O'Connor and others who are with us. We are undergoing a worldwide scientific reawakening because I can tell you our medical schools are not holding these symposiums and neither are the departments of public health and the public is demanding the truth and you and this esteemed panel are helping bring it to them today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Peter McCullough, setting the tone there. And last but certainly not least, Dr. Heert van den Bosch, please tell us why you chose to study medicine or science, what it is that you do and what you're passionate about. Well, Shabnam, I'm the alien in the room because, as you may know, I studied veterinary medicine. So uh, I was, uh, I felt very much attracted to veterinary medicine because I knew there were a lot of disciplines in, involved, like in, in, in human medicine. And uh, essentially what uh, I felt uh, particularly attracted uh, about, and it was also something that uh, Pierre was mentioning, was the problem solving. Because uh, remember, an, an animal that is sick cannot tell you what the problem is. So you have not an, an anamnesis. So very often you have really to examine the animal very thoroughly to find out what exactly the problem is. It, it will not tell you basically what uh, what's going wrong. But then early on uh, after my studies, uh, so I did some clinical work in the veterinary field, especially in uh, equine medicine and surgery. But then, uh, yeah, it was completely uh, coincidence. I uh, switched on early on in my professional career to uh, molecular biology and virology, especially in the field of human infectious diseases. Uh, did also a PhD in, in, in virology. And then specialized in uh, and, and was teaching at university uh, environmental virology and uh, also uh, zoonosis. So um, infectious diseases that can be transmitted from uh, animal to, to humans. And this has become very, very relevant. I think uh, veterinary and human medicine are uh, really very tightly uh, interconnected. And um, yeah, then uh, after a number of years in academia, I uh, moved on to work in industry, especially in the vaccine industry, because I felt very much attracted by the idea that by developing vaccines, you could not just uh, help one single person, but uh, you know, many, 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 many uh, people in, in terms of uh, preventing diseases. And uh, right now I'm uh, working as a, a private uh, you know, a consultant. I have my consultancy company where I am um, working with biotech and also uh, industry. I felt uh, very rapidly attracted also by the complexity of the, uh, of the pandemic, where for me it became very, very clear that this was a field that was very multidisciplinary where we would need to draw from several different fields uh, that I felt uh, familiar with. And as uh, other colleagues were uh, telling, uh, I, I decided basically already 10 or 12 years ago that I would use the science as a tool, as a tool for solving problems, especially uh, problems that are uh, related to, to, global and, uh, to global health where uh, I think we as scientists have an obligation not just to study and to understand uh, uh, structures and, and biological phenomena, but I think we do have a moral obligation indeed to, uh, to apply this understanding and this knowledge to the improvement of, um, of, uh, of human health. Over. 
Absolutely. Thank you very much. Fascinating. And of course, you can see why we've invited these panelists today to join us on the launch of the Trailblazer Town Hall themed Science for Humanity.